Hello, my name's Heather and at this time of the year I become a daily -o widow. Because my husband Jeff spends hours in the greenhouse. Today he's asked me to invite you into his greenhouse. Just a word of warning, some viewers might find the scenes of violence against Dahlia tubers disturbing. Now before I start dividing my dahlias up I think I'd better give you a few definitions particularly for those of you who are new to growing dahlias. If you buy a dahlia from a garden centre in a plastic bag say this is the likely thing that you're going to get. It's what would be described as a dahlia tuber but in fact this is actually four separate tubers each with the potential to produce a plant. So really this thing in front of you is a clump of tubers. Now in this coming video I'll probably be talking about the old stalk. That's this part here. That's where last year's flower was growing from and these tubers came underneath it in the ground. You'll probably also hear me refer to the crown that's this area where the old stalk joins the tubers and this is where most of the shoots will appear. Additionally in this coming video you'll probably also hear me refer to pot tubers. Pot tubers are little small tubers that have been grown in a pot for the previous summer from cuttings. Here are some cuttings that I've already taken. Here's some I prepared earlier and here you can see some of the pot tubers that I grew last year have turned into tubers and are now starting to sprout. If you're interested in how I grow these I've made a video recently called How to Grow Pot Tubers the Jeff and Heather Way. It's on YouTube so if you're interested take a look at that. Let me tell you about the resources I have available to help me do this job. Firstly you need some sort of sharp cutting instrument very occasionally I use a knife but in the main I use these very sharp scissors. They were actually designed for bonsai growing. They've got a very sharp tip that can get into places that other scissors can't reach. I use these a lot. Another tool that I use all the time is this very stiff brush which helps get rid of all the compost, all the, all the uh, peat etc off the tubers so that it exposes where the shoots are because if you cut the tubers in the wrong place then you'll end up destroying them. It's the 5th of April about two weeks since I took the dahlia tubers out of winter storage. I've put them in trays and covered them up with compost and as you can see some of them are starting to shoot so it's getting to the time now where I need to start dividing the tubers into individual plants. By the way I've been hearing that lots of gardeners have lost quite a few of the tubers over winter this, this late this winter. Well I'm pleased to say that out of about 400 tubers I've only lost about two. So I'm pleased to say that the method that I use for storing my tubers seems to have been a success this winter. Over the winter we had a few cold nights and on a couple of occasions it went down to minus six. As I've mentioned in previous videos, I don't have any heat in my greenhouse, no artificial heat. But the way that I cover them up with compost in the big box helps insulate them from the cold. Let's start with this tuber of Westerton Harry, one of the best medium decorative dahlias around. Westerton Harry. I'll start by cleaning off the loose soil around the tuber so I can see what I'm doing. In fact I can count five separate shoots. When you've got a tuber like this you've got a choice to make. Either you can plant the whole tuber directly into the ground or you can split it up, divide it into separate pieces. If you, were plant, if you were to plant the whole thing out into the ground you would find that you would get at least five separate stems coming up. 
each of those those five stems would produce quite a few flowers too and it would be a nice display for the first summer but here's the thing if you were to plant it out like this each of those separate shoots would each produce eight separate tubers as well so you would end up with 40 little tubers coming out of that plant when it comes to digging it up for storage time you will be in a real mess 40 tubers how would you divide that up it will be a nightmare so I'm going to divide this up I'm going to start with removing this tuber because it's broken at that point so that's just going to rot so I'll get rid of that I'm going to start by dividing it in half but as you can see I've just discovered that lower down on the, set, the tuber below there are more shoots so I've got more than five shoots coming so there it is cut in half I'm going to remove the first small tuber with its separate shoot and there it is that little tuber will give nutrients to that shoot and by the uh, end of May it will be ready to plant out into the garden I'll now split this one It's not strictly necessary, but I think it's best to remove all the surplus material so that it doesn't rot. So that you're left with something like that. And as you can see, this little tuber has actually got two shoots. I might use one of them as a pot tuber. Now on these two tubers, there are actually four shoots. You could plant them like that, but I'm a bit greedy. I think you can get at least two plants out of that so I'm going to have a go at splitting it I think that's quite a success I'll now turn to the second half of the tuber I can see two shoots there and I want to get two plants out of it, two separate plants out of it so I've cut it down the middle and split it into two so at the end of, that, of all that, I've now got six separate little tubers with shoots and they'll all grow into full growing flowering plants by the summer. The next job is to pot them up. For potting them up, I use ordinary multi-purpose compost. I've got no particular variety that I look for, I just look for the cheapest. I think this variety has got quite a bit of peat in it Pete's going to be banned in British compost from next year so I think they were selling it off cheap at the end of last summer to get rid of it I took uh, full advantage you need to bear in mind that the, the, the tubers the dailies are only going to be in these pots for a few weeks they're not going to live in there for the full summer so the quality of the compost is not totally important I keep the compost quite moist but definitely not wet because the tubers could still rot a few of them have developed little roots which should help but the ones that haven't developed any roots yet you could rot them if you if you overwater them and I use a pot that's just big enough to, to get up the whole of the tuber in but to use a big pot like that one all that would happen would be that you would be wasting a lot of compost because when it comes to planting them out in the summer you'd find out that the roots haven't developed sufficiently to hold the compost intact so it would just be a waste and I plant the tuber sufficiently deep that the shoot is just under the surface of the compost Quite often the shoot puts out new roots where it meets the crown of the, of the tuber so you need it to be at soil level so that it's uh, going to get uh, into this, the roots are going to go into the compost. If on the other hand you planted the tuber too deep the new shoot would struggle to reach the light. So there we are six little Westerton Harrys all potted up 
ready for the summer. Now this is a variety called Western Pirate. There are three separate tubers on this one. Western Pirate is one of the best plants that I grow I think. It's a brilliant flower, it's great in the garden, easy to grow and it also still wins loads of prizes in competition too. Western Pirate I think you can see there are shoots on the left hand tuber and similarly on the right tube, right hand side tuber but the one in the middle doesn't look to have any but when you turn it upside down you can see that there is actually a small shoot with its own root coming out of the middle tuber too so I should be able to get three out of this now there's a slight concern with the tubers you can see the one on the right here is starting to rot at the bottom and the one on the left is also a bit hollow too but you need to bear in mind that all a tuber is going to do is to support the shoots in the first month or two they're a bit like an egg, an egg yolk it feeds the bird until the bird's big enough to get out and support itself so although the tubers will probably rot away during the summer the shoots are going to produce their own roots which will in turn turn into new tubers for next year and as long as the roots are strong they'll produce a, a plant that's got flowers so I've now split the plant into three tubers and as you can see I've cut away some of the tuber it's still slightly rotten in the middle but those bits were definitely rotten and similarly with this one I've chopped off the rot still not that great in the middle I'll pop the three of them up and hope that the shoots start to produce their own roots like that one and then they'll be okay I think that this one with three shoots it will be better to take away two of the shoots so it's just got the one that that tuber needs to support that'll improve its chances of survival. So I've removed a couple of shoots there's just one left now let's see how it goes. So there they are the three of them potted up now I'm not saying that all three are going to survive they might not but if there's only one well that's all I started out with in the first place over the next four or five weeks I'll be keeping an eye on all my, con all my potted up plants seeing which ones are growing. If there's nothing showing in, in about a month's time then I'll probably take the, pot, the tuber out of the pot and have a, have a root around see what it looks like. If it's rotting throw it away but if it's producing roots and it's obviously going to grow I keep it. Simple as that. You win some and you lose some you just have to learn to live with that. Now this tuber is of a dahlia called Westerton Ella Grace which is a really beautiful dahlia but it's a rubbish tuber maker. Westerton Ella Grace I've always found it difficult to overwinter it successfully. As I thought the stem is more or less black all the way through there's hardly any living flesh from which a, a, a shoot could emerge. So I'm afraid it's one for the compost heap. Fortunately last spring I took a cutting and grew it as a pot tuber. I hope that you can see that there is a shoot coming air, there already. So I will at least have one Western Ella Grace this summer. Now in general I like to plant one tuber with one shoot because the shoot only needs the tuber to which it's actually directly connected for it to survive. All the other tubers are superfluous they're not going to do anything apart from rot. But just occasionally you come up with a conundrum like this one you can see that there is a shoot there and I can't actually tell which of these tubers it's going to be connected to and the only way I would find out, find out would be to chop it up and if I found out I chopped it in the wrong place then I would lose it. Because it's the, the variety is called Wanda's Capella which is one of my favourites I've decided that I'm going to keep both of these tubers and so I'm going to use a bigger pot than normal which obviously uses more compost 
but I think that for that variety it's worth the risk. Hooray! I found another Westerton Ella Grace and this one's got some shoots on it. Now I'm not sure that the shoots here are attached to this tuber below. It looks more likely that they were attached to a tuber that was there and it's already rotted. But even if they were connected to that one down, the, down below, that one's rotten as well. But the good news is that that little shoot is attached to this tuber. There's a direct link and that will definitely grow. So at least I will have two Western, Western Ella Graces in the garden this summer. Now the more observant of you might have noticed that all the dahlias I've divided so far, the names begin with the letter W. Over the years I've taught myself that the more methodical I am, the faster the job gets done. So I now divide them in alphabetical order, starting at the end of the alphabet and, and working backwards. There's no X, Y's or Z's, so the W's are the first ones I've done. Taught yourself, Jeff? Ooh, I think you'll find it was probably my idea. We spent ages and ages trying to find dahlias when the, there was no order to them. Sometimes when you've potted up a tuber like this, you find that it's at an angle because of the way that the tube is positioned in the pot. But you'll find that even though it's at around 45 degrees at the moment, it'll soon get up to perpendicular two or three weeks when it's had plenty of light. The job can become a little bit daunting when you get a tuber like this. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven shoots on it. Where do you start? Well this is where my favourite bonsai scissors come into the room. I'm going to start by removing the old stalk, the remnants of the old stalk. And having done that, you can see that it's quite rotten. Now that's a good thing actually, because it helps you divide. I'm going to get the scissors, plunge them into the hole where the stalk was, and give it a bit of a chop and see what happens. I'm doing my best to chop the whole tuber in half. Having done that, it's made the job a bit easier because I can see that that little shoot is attached to this tuber. Shoot is attached to this tuber. So I'm going to remove those two for starters. So that's two down and a few more to go. But the few more to go, I can now see a little bit more I can see a little bit more clearly where they're attached to a tuber. After a bit more hacking I've now got five separate plants. You occasionally get examples like this one where there are only two tubers but there are three shoots that are growing very close together. Now you could try to divide them where you've got two shoots on one tuber and just a single shoot on the other but I think that will be pretty difficult to, to uh, pull off. Even if, even if you were to be successful and divide them like that, you would find that the two shoots on the one tuber would be so close together that they will push into each other and not have a, a very good display. So I think in these circumstances the best thing to do is to get a knife and remove the, the centre stem and make that grow as a pot tuber, to use it as a cutting for a pot tuber. That leads you, leaves a wider gap in which to split the two tubers and also of course you've got this stem that, can, that you can use as a cutting and that will grow next year. So that was a straightforward division and there's the little cutting. Now if you're looking for a variety on which to practice your dividing skills I can recommend this one, it's called Marlene Joy. It's a very pretty pale pink Fimbriated variety. Marlene Joy. The beauty of it is that virtually every tuber has got a shoot and the tubers are always beautifully spaced like that so they're dead easy to pull apart, to, to chop apart. So there we are, six tubers, six shoots. Now there are some tubers where it's very difficult to decide what to do. This one's got two shoots appearing on the crown, but they don't have any tuber coming from them. 
I don't think they're attached to that tube with there. Realistically, there's nothing to divide. So all I can hope is that by planting this tuber just below the surface of the compost, at least one of these shoots will produce its own little roots. That's probably going to be a bit hit and miss because neither of those shoots has got a, a tuber to support them in the meantime while they're producing a root. So whether or not it'll happen, I don't know. I'll just have to suck it and see. So that's it. 16th of April and they're all potted up. We've got a greenhouse full now. And I've got quite a lot in my garage too. And along the way I've taken quite a few cuttings to use for pot tubers for next year. Over the next few weeks I'll probably be taking more cuttings from these plants as second or third shoots develop. I only like to have one shoot per plant so any extras will turn into pot tuber cuttings. Now I know for sure that not all of these will grow. There will still be some that, that uh, rot in the pots or just fail to take off. Over the next two or three weeks no doubt I'll be taking some out of the pots that I've potted them into just to see if there's any sign of life and sometimes there won't be. But you can't win them all. But I'm confident that I'll have enough to grow in the garden this year. I usually grow about 400 to 450 dahlias and I'm sure I've got that many. And because they're all stored here in alphabetical order I'll be able to work out what I've got of each variety. That'll enable me to make me plan for the coming year. I hope you found this video useful. Ooh, I've got my husband back. Hmm. Well, at least for a few weeks before he starts planting his dahlias out into the garden. If you have been disturbed by any of the images in this film, or if the issues raised in it have given you cause for concern, here are some organisations that should be able to offer you help and support.